Start, Nalini. All right. I'll get this going then. This is. Oh, hey, Mike. The... Good evening, everybody. Thank you for being flexible. This is the May 13th meeting of the Citizens Advisory Committee for the Costa Mesa Sanitary District. We'll call this meeting to order at what is it, like 6 06? Um, yes. First order of business will be um, roll call. No longer. Committee member Sue Lester. Member Seth Greener. You can just here. say it here. Oh, here. It's actually Grinder. <laughs> it's actually Grinder. Member but, Phil Marsh. Here. Right here. Can we remember Monty yeah. Fields? Uh, here. Committee member Judy Takaya. Here. Committee member Judy Gilo. Here. Committee member Elodie Katz. Here. Committee member Dickie Fernandez. Here. Committee member Daniel Baum. Present. Committee member Andrew Nielsen. Here. And Chair Mike Carey. Present. Thank you. Thank you, Nilwani. First, I'd like to uh, welcome the brand new members of our committee. It's exciting to have you on board. Welcome aboard. We look forward to working with you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see, would it be appropriate at this time, um, Nilwani, to have the new members kind of introduce themselves? Or is that okay? Uh, sh sure, we could do that during public comments. That's fine if they would like to, or we can do that during item one, during the appointment of the chair and vice chair before we continue. Either okay, way. we'll do it before um, item number one then. You got it, go ahead. Um, okay, so let's see, moving on to our uh, next agenda item would be public comment. Uh, there are no members of the public currently on this call. Is that correct? That's correct. And we did not receive any written member written comments from any member of the public either, Mr. Chairman. Um, but we did receive written comments from Mr. Moser. Yes. Consider that, that would be pertaining to the strategic plan item that we'll be discussing later. So okay, perfect. Not at this time. Okay. Um, Next, moving along to um, agenda item number one, appoint a chair and vice chair of the committee. Um, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will take this one. Perfect. For our new members of the committee, I'd like to welcome Mr. Daniel Baum, Dickie Fernandez, and Seth Greener to the committee. Uh, as you may have read in your CAC manuals and as a refresher, Every two years, we have an appointment to make for the chair and vice chair of the committee. And at the first meeting of the new term, it is appropriate for us to go ahead and have a member of the committee to nominate and appoint a new chair and vice chair. So I open the floor to the committee to do so at this time. Question? Yes. Sure. Okay. Sure, are sure. you are you allowed to uh, nominate someone who is currently serving, such as uh, Mike? Uh, okay. that, because I would like to nominate him to serve again. Yes, that is appropriate. Okay. So and I would like I would like to second that. Thank you. So we have a nomination by committee member Gilo to nominate Mike Carey to continue on as chair. And a second by Phil Marsh. Um, can we open it up for discussion at this point? Yes, we can. I, I'm happy to accept. However, we sh um, I would encourage anyone else from the committee, both new members and um, historical members, to consider the chair position as well. I've done it for two years. Again, I'm happy to do it, but. Um, would encourage other members of the committee to also step forth or nominate anybody else if anyone else is interested. <laughs> Don't Gary, want to speak up. None. <laughs> <laughs> That's called by popular demand. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe. 
can call for the question, sir. Okay. Um, all right, hearing nobody else speak up, we'll, we have a motion and a second. And I will need to do this by roll call vote, unfortunately, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Committee member Gilo? Uh, yes. Uh, I, what do you want? I is fine. <laughs> okay. Committee member Baum? Aye. Committee member Fernandez? Aye. Committee member Katz? Aye. Committee member Marsh? Committee member Marsh? Bill Marsh? <laughs> I don't think he's got his audio on, on mute. Oh. Phil? Uh -huh. No, he's not on mute. Phil, can you hear me? Phil, can you hear us? Hello, Phil. Hello. <laughs> okay, committee member Greenert. Technology. I, actually, I, I had to drop off. Oh, because I couldn't uh, hurt you for a moment. We have. So I came a, back on side grooving. That's okay. We have a nomination by committee member Gilo and a second by committee member Marsh to appoint Mike Carey to the position of chair for the next two years. So we're seeking your vote at this time. Sure, I approve, aye. Aye, thank <laughs> you. Aye. Committee member Takaya. Aye. Committee member Nielsen. Aye. Committee member Fields. Aye. Committee member Marsh. I, I will assume that it's an I since he made the second. Okay. <laughs> so motion carries. Thank you, Chair Carey. You may continue to appoint the vice chair. If there's any nominations. This is uh, Andrew and I would put forth Elodie Chaps as a good nominee for vice chair. But leave it to the group to think if that's a good idea. Do I have a second? I'll second that. This is Mike. Thank you. Okay. Open for discussion. Um, I, this is Elodie. I have a question. I saw um, I, I my term was renewed, but it's only for a year. Um, is that problematic since the term is for two years? for this vice chair in theory? That's is a good that? question. Um, <laughs> well, I, I think we could still, um, you could still serve as vice chair for a year. And then uh, when the term's up, um, the board might, maybe the, they may reappoint you again. And if they do, then um, we can continue the chair, chair vice chairperson. Um, if not, then we then the committee would appoint a, a, a different or a new vice chair. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so there we have a motion and a second. Um, we've had discussion. All you know, we we can call the question now. You're going to do that by roll call, Nolani. Oh, technology, Nolani, you there? Nolani right. froze up. Um, Gina, can you can you do the roll call, Gina? Yes, I can do the roll call. Okay, Gina will do it. Sorry, let me just get all the names. Sure. In front. Oh my okay, Judith Gilo. Aye. Daniel Baum. Aye. Elodie Katz. Aye. Dickie Fernandez? Aye. Bill Marsh? Hmm. Phil can't hear us. Phil, can you hear us? Okay. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Okay. Um, Seth Greiner? Greiner, aye. Judy Takaya? Aye. Andrew Nielsen? Aye. Uh, Monty Fields. Aye. 
And I'm sorry, did I miss anybody? I think uh, Sue Lester, um, you can call for Sue Lester. Oh. I think that would be abstain, um, not there. But Phil, can you hear us? You give us a thumb up or something like that? Thumb up, Phil? You okay, Phil? I don't know, Phil can't hear us. <laughs> <That's weird. Yeah. laughs> okay. okay, well, motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you, Gina. Thank you, Gina. Um, I'm sorry, folks. I don't know what happened, but my call dropped. It's okay, Gina, Gina took the roll call. Or Gina took the um, um, vote. Got the vote. Thank so you. It passed unanimously with uh, Sue Lester uh, absent. Okay, thank we you. Still can't, you know, we still can't know. We don't know if Phil can hear us or not. I, yeah, I can't see that. Um, what about Seth? Do you say he's absent? No, no I'm Seth here. is there. I, I had to leave and then I came back. But I, I'm here. Oh, I couldn't. Okay. I had to leave. <laughs> I had to leave because I couldn't hear, but then I came back. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, attached to this agenda item is the um, application forms that everybody had submitted and the, the CAC guidelines and our handbook. I would encourage the um, historical members and the new members to please go through and reread those and familiarize yourself with the, um, the guidelines and the handbook. Um, Again, welcome aboard and congratulations, Elodie, and thank you all for your vote of confidence and allowing me to continue my position as chair. Um, next up on the agenda is uh, item number two, approve the Citizens Advisory Committee meeting minutes of March 11, 2020. If you recall, that was our shortest meeting in history. Um, have you all had a chance to look at those, at the minutes and those that um, were in attendance? Can we, do we have a motion to approve the minutes? This is LED, I'll, I'll move to approve the minutes. Great. Do we have a second? This is, this is Andrew, I can second. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, discussion, no? Uh, all those in favor? Oh, sorry, sorry, no, Lonnie, you wanted to get, I'm getting used to roll call. That's okay. Let's take the roll call. Council, council, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Too many committees here. Uh, committee member Takaya? Aye. Committee member Nielsen? Aye. Committee member Baum? Aye. Committee member Fernandez? Abstain. Committee member Katz? Aye. Committee member Gilo? Abstain. <clears throat> Committee member Fields? Aye. Committee member Marsh? Chair Mike Carey? Aye. Thank okay. you. Motion carries. Um, all right, moving on to our next agenda item, the Alkaline Battery Recycling Program, uh, the final report. I'm assuming, is that you, Scott, or is that staff? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm gonna turn this over to, to Nabila Guzman. She's gonna give this report. Great. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. This year's Battery Recycling Contest was held from September 2019 through April 2020. 23 schools signed up to participate in the contest, but only 18 schools actually returned batteries. Uh, a total of 10,162 pounds of batteries were collected and Sonora Elementary won first place for the first time and they received a reward of $1,200. Due to COVID-19 pandemic, no reward presentations were possible this year, but staff did post a congratulatory message on, to, Sonora, to Sonora Elementary on social media. A total of $7,400 was given to the 18 schools for their collection efforts, and the breakdown of the rewards is included in the staff report for your review. Additionally, a, a total of $7,723 with 12 cents was the cost for the collection and disposal of the batteries collected. This amount will, re will be refunded by a household hazardous waste grant 
that has been awarded by, to the district from CalRecycle. This concludes my report and I am happy to answer any questions the committee may have. Great, thank you, Nabila. I'm, I'm excited that Sonora won this year. They, <laughs> that was a great effort. I'd also like to thank staff. The little video that you guys shared, um, the congratulatory video was really cute. Um, thank you. Yeah. And also, I'd like to thank Mercury Disposal too. There uh, is working with them in conjunction with the schools. They've been picking up at my location in addition to the schools, and they were very, um, at least in my experience, they were very attentive to the needs of the, of the district and the schools. Yes, Mercury Disposal is a great partner for this program. Yes. Um, are there any other comments from the, from the committee regarding the... Um, Mike, this is uh, Andrew. I just have a super quick comment. Um, the third place school, Killybrook Elementary, I have, my son goes there, and just the feedback was overwhelmingly positive. I think um, the, the program was, was really fun for the kids. And I know that this is the second year they participated in last year. It, it actually springboarded into like a little uh, environmental council at the school. So this, this program has a lot of legs and, and I would just, uh, for Scott and maybe to take back to the other members of the board, just well done. And I think it's something as long as we're allowed to do it uh, in a post COVID world, that it's a great program. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes. This yes, is uh, Dr. Schaefer, Arlene. Uh, I just wanted Amelia to explain a little about it, that this year is different and that each school would be getting an award, uh, but what is the certificate that they're going to receive? Maybe you can talk about that, that why we can't go to the schools. Right. So the contest uh, ended in April, but with distant learning, we couldn't do a um, award presentation. So typically every year, one of the a staff member or one of the board members goes to the school and we have these giant checks and the kids really love it. We do a presentation. So this year due to distant learning and schools being closed, we just sent an email with that chart um, in your staff report that lays out what, how many batteries each school collected and the reward they would be getting and just you know, in the notice that they would be getting a, a check in the mail. So it is a little bit different than other years, but the schools and the students were understanding. And the least that staff could do was post a, a little video on social media, just a fun video um, to congratulate Sonora for winning first place. Thank you, Nabilia. Nabilia. You said there was 18 schools involved? Yes out of is that just in costa mesa uh it's schools within the costa mesa sanitary district area so a uh, newport heights it's a uh -huh. newport but still particip participates in the program within our district uh, is is there a total of number of schools out of like 18 out of 30 or 18 out of no every school can participate that's within the district um just if the schools really need the leadership and somebody to take this on is there so a list of are, the schools? I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt. No, I'm sorry. Um, so yes, every school is allowed to participate. I do reach out every year in the fall before the program starts. But again, somebody at the school really needs to take this on. How many schools is that though? All the schools in the district, how many are there? Uh, including, we include private schools. Right, so you don't have an, do you have an estimate? No, I do not. We, we can get that information back to you. We'll, we'll, we'll get that back to you. Okay, and is there a place I can find the schools that did participate? Uh, it's included in your staff report. Okay. Yes, so the 18 schools that participated are in the staff report. Yeah. Thank you. Um, at the risk of putting you on the spot, Nabila, do you know how these numbers, um, the collection numbers compared to last year, considering that the contest was cut short by several weeks? Yeah, so a little in the staff report, it's a, the program has been on for five years. So in the staff report, there are charts that oh, have yeah. the total amount collected per year. Last year, we collected a little over 12,000. Since the program was cut short this year, we did come in at $10,000, which is still tremendous effort. Uh, 10,000 pounds, yeah. Yes. Perfect. Great, this report is very nice, nicely done. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any other comments on the battery collection program? 
All right, hearing none, we'll move on to our next agenda item. Um, item number four, the sewer master plan update. Um, yes, Mr. Chairman, I have a request if we can possibly table this item. This item has a lot of details and information, uh, which require a lot of time, I believe. And I, tonight I would really want to focus on our, our strategic plan because uh, our goal is to have that plan adopted by the end of June. And we really want the, the community's feedback on our, on our proposed plan for the next five years. Uh, the sewer master plan was presented to the board yesterday at a study session, and that meeting is recorded. So if you do want to see the, the nuts and bolts of, of that plan of what we're working on, you can go on our website and, and watch that, that meeting. And um, uh, Michael um, uh, will, it gave that presentation. You can, you can hear his report. So if it's okay with the with you, Chairman Kerry, I would like to table this item for future meetings and, and move on to item number five. That's fine, perfect, Scott. We'll revisit the uh, the sewer plan at a future meeting. Um, Thank now you. that the agenda's gone, I'm assuming the next item on the agenda, without going back, is the uh, 2020 to 2025 strategic plan. Yes, th thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, so I'm, some of you, I'm sure, have, have worked on strategic plans in your organizations. Uh, it, it's a plan that really creates a, a roadmap uh, for the future of your organization. Uh, in the past, we've had two strategic plans. Uh, we had a 2010-15 plan that was titled Meeting and Exceeding Public Expectations. And then we have our 2015-20, which is coming to the end at June, on June 30th which is called planning for a better tomorrow. And, and we, in, in the last 10 years, I believe we have achieved quite a bit. It, it keeps us on a path on where we wanna go, uh, which is great. And now we need to continue that path. And so, so we developed um, a five-year plan, another five-year plan, a 2020-25 year plan. And um, Nolani, if you go on the next slide, please. To create this plan, we, we've met several times. It's, it was really a collaborative approach with all the staff. All every every employee in the organization met on uh, April 15th, the 20th, 27th, 28th, um, and and we worked together collaboratively at developing a, a plan. We presented that plan to the board on a special meeting on May 6th, uh, and we presented it to them again on, on May 12th. Um, this, if you had a chance to review the presentation, it's it's a long uh, plan, long presentation, and I don't plan on getting through the entire plan tonight. Um, for the new committee members, uh, just an FYI, um, the committee has established a, a policy that we will stop at 7:30. We, we have your input and all that stuff, but we don't want to keep you all night. <laughs> so so we stop at 7:30, and whatever we don't get done, we'll table that to the next meeting. Now. The, the, committee, the committee's next meeting is in July. And what I recommend is if you want to continue the discussion at 7.30, we can have another meeting anytime you want. We can schedule another one in, in May or early June. Um, the caveat is I just want to get all your comments in so we have that feedback and ready to present to the board on, on June 30th, or I'm sorry, in the, on the June um, board meeting. So so with that, if, if um, we go to the next slide, please, uh, Nalani. So these are the items we'll be talking about tonight. Uh, obviously, I won't be going through all the items. Again, there's not enough time, but we'll talk about our vision. What what is a vision? And why we have to have? Why we want a vision? And what's the difference between a vision and a mission statement? Some people get those two confused. So we'll talk about the difference of those of uh, the vision, vision and mission. We'll talk about our core values, what we believe in, what our values, and how why we feel strongly about those values, and then we'll talk about the objectives and the strategies. Uh, and along with the action plan on how to achieve those objectives and strategies. So again, I don't plan on getting through all this tonight, um, but uh, I'm definitely looking um, forward to receiving your, your, your feedback suggestions on what we uh, have drafted so far. So next slide, please, Nalani. So let's, let's talk about um, the vision. So um, a vision is a dream that basically does not exist yet, right? It's, it's a picture of the community that we're working towards that will one day be achieved when we're gone. In other words, the way, I, the way we vision, picture a vision is you close your eyes and you picture what do I want that community, what do I want my community to look like? You know, what is, what is the dream? What is the, what, one day, what would that be like? 
And that's what we consider a vision. It's, it's something that's extremely hard to achieve and most likely it will not be achieved in our lifetime, but it's something that we, we work hard to strive to achieve. And we originally had a, um, a vision statement that was, uh, I think it's called leading a community that is uh, contaminated free. That was our original vision. And the board didn't really like that vision because um, they didn't, I think they liked the word contaminated. Um, so they told us to go back to the drawing board and come up with another vision. And so what you have before you right now is, is the vision that we presented. We presented to the board yesterday. They seemed to like it, but again, we, we like your comment and feedback on this. And when we talk about a community that is free from solid waste and water pollution. And what do we mean by that is that if we don't do our jobs, if we don't do a good job, uh, performing our, 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 our job, what happens? Well, then we, we, if we don't do our job well, then we have um, sewer spills. We have litter, trash that contaminates or pollutes our beaches, our waterways, our environment. So we want to be a leader, leading, a leader in the community uh, that leads by example, that, that demonstrates that we're doing the best that we can. And by doing the best we can, the vision is ultimately to have a community that's free of solid waste and wastewater pollution. So that's our that's our vision. That's what we that's what we picture. So I, I turn it back to the community now. Any comments, feedback on what we're presenting? Do you, do you agree? Disagree? Any suggestions? No, um, I agree. And based on that statement, I I think it would. Um, and to echo Mr. Moser's comments. It does um, suggest a more balanced approach to solid waste as well in terms of um, waste reduction. It kind of places a value on reduction. Right, right. Uh, uh, I, mean, I mean, when you see, when you see uh, like a, uh, after a big storm, what do you see on the beaches? Just tons of litter, right? Needles on the beaches trash plastics i mean you see the you see in the you, you've heard of the, the big plastic blog in the water in the ocean because uh there's everyone is is just throwing away plastics and not recycling it properly and it goes into the environment so that's why we implement our, our programs to ensure that people are recycling properly and and when they recycle pop properly we're not polluting the environment we're not polluting our waterways and so that's that's our vision one day everyone will be recycling the right way um, question yes did you uh, say uh, salt water uh, only, or did you say um, all waters and brown all water, waters? All, all, all waterways. So that could be like the Delhi Channel, the rivers. Uh, it could be ponds. It could be the ocean. Any water tables, you know, water in the grounds, anything that, that, okay. that could be contaminated by trash or sewers we want to prevent, we want to make sure that's free from can be any kind of pollution of that, of those materials. Okay, good. I, I was interested in the, uh, making sure it was also uh, the groundwater and. Yes, definitely groundwater, because that's what we drink, right? We, want to, we don't want to contaminate that. Kinda. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other, okay, there's no more questions or, or, or about that, uh, I will move on to a mission statement. So um, a mission describes what we're going to do and why we're going to do that. It's it's more concrete and more ori action oriented than, than a vision statement. So in our 2015 mission, mission our, our current strategic plan we have now, our, our mission is protecting our, protecting our community's health and the environment by providing solid waste and collection services, okay? This, this mission, our, our core mission, it describes the what, but it fails to describe the why. Why does CMSD want to protect our community's health and environment, right? Why do we want to do that? It doesn't say that. So, so staff came up with this new mission. The proposed mission is described, it describes the what, which is um, uh, to protect the public health and preserve the environment. And it says, well, why do we want to do that? Well, we want to do that for our current and future generations. So I put it back to the committee. What do you think about any comments, suggestions about this mission? Do you like it, don't like it? Uh, any, any changes to it? We'd love to hear it from you. 
Oh, I think Judith has Go ahead, a Julia. question. Uh, okay, um, I I think the change you, that you've made uh, to include present and future uh, is re re well well said. Well, thank you. Thank you. I feel like um, people could possibly get the wrong idea of preserve the environment and not something along the lines as bettering the environment. So your suggestion is change the word preserve and bettering the environment? Well, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know if that's my suggestion or not. I just can see that as possible as a possible something that someone could get stuck on because I feel like the idea would be to through um, sanitation is making the environment a better place than it is right now, not preserving what it is. Okay. Okay, I get you. Okay, yes, thank you. This is Dickie Fernandez. Um, I see the the what and the why, but I feel that the how is missing. Yes, um, the how is more on the core values. We we discussed that in our core values, which I'll explain that in a second. So, but the the how is is our core values. Okay. And, okay. So, and then uh, I, I would uh, somewhat agree with what Daniel just mentioned, but um, I think you could probably eliminate the word preserve and, and just say to protect public health and the environment. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Good suggestions. Any, anything, anyone else? All right, well, thank you. That's, that's very good. I think perhaps preserve and protect sounds like they belong together. Okay. Okay. Well, let me take these comments and I'll take it back to staff and we'll, we'll again, we'll hash it out and, and, and come um, uh, revise this a little bit to, to meet uh, people's what uh, everyone's comments. So thank you. Thank you very much. So um, let's look at core values. So as I mentioned, the core values, these are our, our, our distinct characteristics about how, this is the how uh, we operate, what makes us unique in a way we're going about realizing our, our vision. So when we, when we create our core values, they must be specific, actionable, and written in a way that everyone in the organization can be held accountable. So what we have before you, it's, it's very similar to our 2015-20 um, core, core values. How we, we changed the wording a little bit, and we did make some notable changes. For instance, in, in um, 1520, we had technology, but we replaced that with professional development. We think um, professional development is very important to our core values because when you have trained and um, uh, experienced employees, it, it's, it's a betterment for, for the organization. So professional development is extremely important. And then we just kind of, we also reorganized it by um, uh, uh, place by alphabetize. So um, that's why you, we reordered it. But, but these are our core values. This is how we hold, hold my staff accountable to, to um, um, making sure that we are, are moving forward with our, our, our mission statement and our vision. So again, so happy to hear any comments from the, from the committee on, on these values. No, those look great, Scott. Okay. Okay. No, it, it, nothing on core values. Thank you. So we'll move on to um, our our elements. These are our strategic elements, and so these um, are what we're focusing on for the next five years. Now, we did add one additional new. These are pretty much the same elements in the. In the 2015-20, with ex one exception, we did add emergency preparedness. And when we originally presented this to the board, we had emergency preparedness at, at, at number eight. And the board had concerns that um, maybe that uh, if we have it down bottom the list, people might think that it's not as high priority as our other elements. And, and quite frankly, all eight elements are extremely important. We don't really treat one um, one more important over the other. They're all treated equally. But with that said, we, we, we did move emergency preparedness up a bit from eight to three. 
we, we thought sewer, sewer infrastructure fall waste needs to be one and two because that's our bread and butter, right? That's why we exist is because of, of sewer and solid waste. So we kept that at one and two. We put emergency preparedness number three. And then human resources management, that used to be personnel organization management. So we revised that to human resources because that's more of the industry standard in, in organizations when they name personnel departments as more of a human resources department. So these are the eight elements that we'll be focusing on the five years. So any questions on, on, on the elements? To go back to having them numbered, what about um, something like a strategy building blocks and then just a, a hashtag in the front of each one. So that way there are no significance on a certain number. Okay, say that, so say that a strategy what? Strategy building blocks, mm -hmm. something along that line. Okay, okay, good. And this is Monty. I was also thinking the same thing, but possibly maybe letters instead of numbers or or it doesn't have to be that, but something um, to that effect uh, where it's not pushed to where it seems like it's actually set between, hey, number one and this is number eight. So it, it can be anything, a strategy building block or yeah, anything to where it takes that focus off of, oh, well, sewer infrastructure is that number one priority. Right, it could just be the little okay. mark on the side of it, and each one has the, the same mark on it. Got it. Okay, very good. Thank you. Awesome. All right, let's 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 move on. Okay, so here is our, uh, we're going to go by um, our elements, and so what we'll talk about first is, is our objectives. And this describes why the element is important to achieving um, the vision. And so um, this is our objective, uh, pretty quite, quite simple. This is what actually was some suggestion made by the board and it's to maintain an optimal wastewater collection system. Optimal me being, you know, uh, prime system, um, working um, efficiently, effectively, um, simple, easy to remember, uh, to maintain an optimal wastewater collection system. Any questions on that? Okay, let's move on to the strategies. And then uh, we develop a list of strategies explaining how the initiatives will reach their objective. It's a way of describing how we're going to get things done and it bro broadly answers the question, how do we get there from here? Okay, so um, here's a list of the strategies that we identified. Um, for achieving that objective of an optimum sewer system. So um, all these uh, uh, strategies uh, were identified by staff and the board. Um, any any, um, any question, I'm not gonna go through each item, um, but um, hopefully you had a chance to review them before tonight's meeting. Any, any, if you have any questions on any of them, we're happy to answer those questions. Uh, any concerns or there's something we're missing, please, please let us know. Um, I just had a question sure. it, regarding the sewer infrastructure. Is the sewer master plan represented? I didn't see that term, but I didn't know if it was included in another it, way. It, yes, it is in, in the action plan. We'll, we'll, sh we'll show that um, later uh, in a few more slides. But yes, we do okay. identify the, the um, sewer master plan um, in there. Okay, thank you. In fact, um, if you, when I'm trying to find the... Um, Oh, it's, it's number four, <laughs> sewer system management plan, yep. audit and update. Yep. yep. Sorry, yep. based out. Thank you. No worries. No worries. Okay. Scott, this is Dickie Fernandez. Uh, one thing I would suggest is to CCTV, not just the pipeline, but also to CCTV your manholes. Okay, okay, CCTV manholes, yeah. That's a bad idea, okay. Very good. Okay, let's move on. Thank you. All right, so now we are gonna talk about, this is the, the action plans, right? So, so um, our action plan is, is basically describes how we're gonna get things done, right? And, and the one big difference about this plan versus the past plans is that this time we assign an owner to each, each action plan. This is, this is where we, we said the, the um, 
strategic plan has to be accountable. Employees have to be held accountable to the plan. So you'll see the departments or, or a consultant, EEC is a consultant that we, we use, environmental, oh man, I forget what it's called, engineering, environmental engineering consultants, we use them. So you'll see some of the departments assigned and then there's a completion date. Some are ongoing and, you know, it, it, and we'll explain that in a second why it's just continually, but some have affirmative dates that we're trying to achieve. So, so you'll see on the fall left is, is the strategy and then how do we um, uh, um, achieve that strategy is, is the action plan. So for the first one, like I said, we said our, our strategy to obtain an optimum sewer collection system is to clean our entire mainline system. Okay, so how often do we do that? Well, right now our action plan is within every 18 months. That's, that's our action plan is to clean every 18 months. Now, we, we originally presented a, a plan to the board. Right now, we have um, two sewer cleaning crews. We have um, two cleaning trucks that go around and clean the entire system within 18 months. What staff is recommending is actually adding a third crew. So we'll have, it's actually more of a hybrid crew, a crew that can, a third crew that helps cleaning with the system while at the same time um, provide CCTV video of our, of our uh, pipes. And the board liked that, but they wanted us to bring back more of analysis and more of the um, uh, financial impacts that would have on the district. So that was our original ash plan. We, turned, we, we toned it down to clean the entire sewer system within 18 months. So that, that might be changed because if we, go, if we go to three crews, if we have three crews, we think we can clean the entire system within 12 months and that will greatly help us reduce our sewer spills. Um, any questions on that? You could accomplish that with existing staff and equipment? The existing staff we could do for 18 months, yes. We've been doing that for a couple of years now, for a few years. What we want to do is get down to 12 months. We want to clean the entire system with, within 12 months. To do that, I, I, we believe we need an additional crew. We'll have three crews. On. Okay. Uh, if there's no um, question, yes, a question on that? Yeah, I want to comment on Meg Scott is, and I don't know if this fits into this new plan, but uh, if you synchronize your asset management plan, you can optimize uh, pipeline cleaning uh, because not all pipes need to be cleaned on the same frequency. Um, and so you might be able to maximize the use of your staff. Um, and I could elaborate that more um, aside from this meeting. If you okay. Want to. Yeah, I'd like to hear that. That'd be fantastic. We do. We do have um, an asset man, which comes down to the next one, asset management plan, where um, we do have um, um, tablets, uh, wireless tablets, in our trucks, where they can download uh, digital maps, uh, work orders, videos, so they have a, the history of the cleaning uh, at the palm of their hands. Um, that is um, uh, helps proven to be very, very efficient, um, but. Unfortunately, we're, we're, you know, we're still experiencing, you know, two or three SSOs a year. Our goal is to have zero SSOs. That's our ultimate goal. And so we were thinking, you know, okay, let's add another crew. But, but Dick, if you have suggestions that maybe we can do with our existing crews, we're all, we're all ears for that. And that kind of ties into our, the second strategy, you know. So with the, the asset management system, that's where we, we, we use our, our GPS systems, um, our, our, um, um, Store, uh, GPS systems to to have a history of our cleaning. Um, another uh, action plan is to incorporate storm drain systems because when the sewers gets in the storm drains, we need to know where it's going because where where it's flowing. Because we can, if, if we know where it's going, we can possibly capture it before it hits the waterways. Unfortunately, the storm storm drain maps are not very reliable. Um, they're very difficult to read, and so this is going to be probably some coordination we need with the city staff on creating some new maps. Um, but if we have those maps in our systems, it would greatly improve on, on recovering um, sewer spills. Um, uh, along the lines of um, asset management in terms of you know, where you would claim more frequently or whatever, um, is there also a record of what you actually found during the cleaning to yes. be able to be better able to know that? Yes. They, what they do is they, um, after they clean, they'll, they'll pull out, they'll keep notes and they'll say, you know, heavy grease or light roots, you know, so they'll know 
um, what they pull back and they and they take notes. So when the next time they they arrive, they go, okay, I was here, you know, 18 months ago. The last time I was here, it had a lot of grease. So maybe I need to spend a little more extra time cleaning it. So they they we do take notes. Okay. Moving on. Um, audit the update the sewer uh, sewer system. Yeah, that broke up a bit. So yeah, thank you for the like, like, one more question about like one more question. Sure, sure, absolutely. So, go ahead. Um, when when you do find something like that, where an exception is extra grease or something, uh, when you do find something like there's extra grease or there's a problem, is there then uh, an effort to go back to that community or to try to figure out what the cause of that was to, to prevent yeah. it? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Good question. We do. Um, sometimes we can. Um, sometimes it's most likely if it's a restaurant, we can tie to a restaurant. Uh, which is, uh, um, we can definitely, uh, what we do is you go, we visit that restaurant, we make, we look at their records, make sure they're, they're implementing best management practices. Um, that's easy. However, when we find grease near apartments, multifamily units, that can be a little more challenging because we have no idea who's doing it. Um, we can definitely notify the property management uh, manager to, you know, here, disseminate some information, but it's hard to to really hold people accountable um, for pouring grease um, down down their down the, their sink. We do have a program at Orange Coast uh, College Recycling Center, thanks uh, to Mike Carey's cooperation, where residents can drop off their grease, and and we have a contractor that picks that up at no cost to us or 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 OCC, and they recycle that product. And that's really popular during the uh, holidays when people are frying their turkeys during Thanksgiving and Christmas. Um, very popular during that time of year. Uh, but it's a little more challenging on the residential side. Uh, on the restaurants, we can definitely pinpoint who it is and then we, we, we go pay a visit. Got it, thank you, thank you. So the next one is um, audit and update our sewer system mesh plan. This is uh, Elodie's uh, question that we have this on our on our plan. And, and this is a, a requirement by the state regulators. It's it's a plan which we have on our website. You, you're more like happy to review it. It basically describes how we how we um, manage our sewer system. And we have to audit our, our system every two years. We have a consultant comes in, he looks at our, our plan and he looks how we are implementing that plan and they identify any deficiencies and any kind of improvements that need to be made. So we do this every two years and, and we're planning on doing it again this year. We're up to, we're, last time we did it was 2018, so we'll be auditing our plan again in 2020. So the next, the next strategy is uh, performing preventive maintenance at all our lift stations. So we have 20 lift stations. Um, this is extremely important because of all the moving parts of a pump um, it, it's, it's constantly um, having energy um, power into the pumps, um, a lot of moving parts. So if we stay on top of being proactive and maintaining our stations, it reduces the likelihood of having sewer spills. So here we have a couple of action plans, you know, perform our annual inspections, um, install re reverse phase switches, um, perform preventive maintenance, the Godwin backup pumps, um, that those are kind of like generators, backup pumps. So when we lose power, the pumps kick in and 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 um, continues pumping the wastewater. So there's really no loss of services. Um, and then we have generators for our our, our stations when we lose power. Um, some some stations have uh, generators at the stations, which makes our response time a lot easier. But others we don't have room for generators, so we have to pick them up at the yard and then take them to the stations and hook them up. And that takes a little more, that's a little more time consuming, but, but we do have generators, for all our stations. So, so that's good to know, but um, very important to do our PMs at our stations. Any questions on this page? Okay, I'm seeing none, I'll, I'll move on to the next page. Um, rehabilitate and replace infrastructure before reaching the end of its life cycle. That's basically being very proactive and replacing our pipes. You see it in Los Angeles all the time, right? Broken pipes, um, you know, and, and you know, all this water rushing down the street is because, you know, let's face it, they're a little behind on on, on replacing their infrastructure. So if you're if you're proactive and replacing it before they fail, then you reduce your chances of having a sewer spill. 
in our system, we have close to 5,000 manholes. Um, a lot of those manholes, I'd say maybe half of those manholes are, are the old brick manholes. Um, our concern is that if there's a large seismic activity, large earthquake, those, those bricks can fall into the sewer system and cause a sewer spill. So we developed a plan that every year we go and, and re rehabilitate our manholes by lining the manholes. Um, we do that every year. We are also um, replacing our ductile iron pipes. Um, we don't have a lot of ductile iron pipes in our system, but the ones we do are, are old and they're corroding. And when they corrode, that causes a sewer spill. So we want to get in there and rehabilitate those. And then we want to replace our, our, our pumps. Um, they have a life cycle, just like everything else. Uh, usually it's about 20 years. Um, so uh, when they're coming in their life cycle, we replace them and before they fail. And again, that helps us prevent sewer spills. Any questions on, on, on that strategy and, and, and the action plans? Hi, this is Monty. I was just um, wondering, because I know you stated also rehabilitate. And I know this may just be semantics, but do you think re rehabilitate and or replace should be in there? Or is it kind of common knowledge from uh, your company's st standpoint that replace also means rehabilitate? Well, that's a, that's a good question, Monty. I mean, re replace, in my mind, replace is, is, is your typical, you're removing the pipe, replacing a new pipe. Uh, rehabilitating, in my mind, is, is lining a pipe. So you still have that existing pipe, but then there's a new liner inside the pipe. So to me, that's re rehabilitating, right? It's not a remove and replace. So you make a good point, Monty. We could definitely put it in or in there. So that's that's not a bad suggestion. And it's just semantics. It's, yeah, it's a small thing. It's all good. That's good. Uh, this is Seth. I have a question about the, uh, the pump replacement. Sure. Um, is there anything else that can be done like uh, see how much current is drawing or seeing when the pumps are starting to get old, uh, independent of saying, well, it's, you know, not 20 years, it's 19 years old now. Are there other things that can be done to to monitor the performance of the pump? Yes, we, we, we have a, a SCADA system that, that monitors the run times. So that tells us how hard the, the pump is working. And so if we see it, it's pumping, it's working very hard, then that's telling us, okay, you know, if it continues doing this for uh, a long period of time, it's gonna wear out. And so therefore we, we should replace it. So we do we do look at our run times every day. We, my staff will get up in the morning and look at the run times to see if there's any anomalies. So we do look at that. Great, thank you. Okay, um, moving on. Uh, yes, another question? Okay, I'll, I'll move on. Um, repair infrastructure after this deficiency has been re identified. So, um, one of the things we're doing right now is um, replacing worn iron manhole rings and covers. And, and this is um, uh, a very proactive measure. Maybe you've experienced this, hopefully not in our, in our district, but maybe in other communities where you, you run over a, a manhole that's been dilapidated and maybe it damaged your car. Hopefully that didn't happen here, <laughs> but uh, that's what we're trying to prevent. Uh, we don't want, uh, you know, we want to make sure our manhole covers and rings are, are in top shape and they don't uh, dilapidate where they're, they're cause uh, a public safety to, to the uh, people driving their vehicles. So, so we're constantly evaluating our manhole covering rings and when they meet a certain condition, um, which call like a, a grade four or five, we re rehabilitate those immediately. Um, another um, issues we're dealing with is calcium in our sewer systems. Now we don't have a, a, a major issues like other special districts, but when calcium builds up, it, it's almost like, a, it, it's like a, a grease or I don't know, it's hard to say, but it, when it builds up, it, it, it's, it shrinks the diameter of the, uh, of the pipe. And if you keep build, let it, the calcium build up, it'll build, eventually close the pipe inside the pipe. And now you got a sewer spill on your hands. Removing calcium is very challenging and very hard um, to do. And so we want to get, we want to start removing this now before it becomes a bigger problem. So this is, this is a huge issue for us in the next five years. How do they do that? It's, they, they, um, they are like declogging an artery. They put a balloon in there. No, it's like a chain hmm. flank where they just, they take a chain and they, and just, and they, and they, it's, it's a high speed chain flank and it just cracks it. It just 
um, breaks it by pieces and it just it spins at a real high velocity and it just breaks the pieces off. Um, it is very time consuming. Um, we can I can show you. A, uh, we'll bring back a picture on that. Maybe I'll do a I'll do a staff report on that. Calcium. Okay, and then here's the question. I think um, Seth, you mentioned earlier about our our fog program or um, e, uh, how we enforce our, our grease getting into our system. Part of our SSMP, our sewer system management plan, is that we have to have a fog program. It's a program that that describes um, you know when we have a new when there's a new restaurant that goes in the, in the, into our our community, they have to install a grease interceptor. Um, uh, they have to also implement best management practices. And so once they do that, we go and inspect those inspe um, grease receptors. We inspect the best management practices, making sure that they're not pouring grease down the sewer system because the majority of our, our spills are caused by grease, unfortunately. And it, it's just very difficult to, to find the, the culprits, but this is one way we know we have a lot of restaurants in our community. And so that's why we, we, have, uh, we have to have a very uh, robust fog program. Thank you. So, so next is um, uh, clean lift stations and wet wells and remove grease and control odors. Hopefully, um, hopefully you've never experienced this, but maybe you have. Uh, you smell that maybe that rotten egg smell um, uh, in in the community. Um, that's coming from sewers. Um, it's building. It's basically when grease is built up in the system, and so we want to make sure that we're continually removing that grease in our wet wells. And that controls the odors. Um, sometimes we do get calls from the public, "Hey, we got a nasty smell in the air," and so then we got to go and and try to mitigate that. So by by cleaning our wet wells, we we reduce those kind of calls. The next item is um, monitor inflow after sitting with wet weather. So what inflow is 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 water coming into the system, and that could be from rain. Most likely, what we what we try to count, what we try to monitor is the rain. But it can also be from from um, uh, an irrigation system. Um, it can be from people dumping their pool pool water into the system. Um, but we try to when 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 there's a significant rain event, that's when we monitor inflow. What happens is that we, if you get if you have additional water into the system, it'll back up our treatment plants, and we can have a a, a backup. So we want to make sure that, that we do not have large inflow into our system. We know for one case, um, a Mendoza pump station has been experiencing high inflow, and we believe that's coming from the fairgrounds. Um, we we found we we die tested that the we found five uh, manholes in the fairgrounds, and we die tested those five manholes, and we did determine that two of those manholes were illegally connected into our system, and so we had the fairgrounds people uh, pour concrete down those. Um, systems to clog it to, to clog it up and prevent any inflow coming into our system. The next step we want to do is smoke test the entire fairgrounds. Um, but the challenge is is getting their sewer plans because, as you know, that fairgrounds and all that property around there used to be the airbase back in the 40s, right? And so we're thinking, okay, this system is that old. It goes back to the 40s when the airbase existed. So what kind of and you know that's federal back then that's federal property. So what kind of connections, illegal connections that they do. So that's the next big step we're trying to work with the fairgrounds is to, is to smoke test the entire property, find out where those illegal connections are, and then require them to, to, um, to either um, uh, disconnect them or um, use some kind of method to prevent inflow from entering our system. Any questions on that? Uh, a question? Yes. I presume then that it is a good thing that we're not having the fair at the fairgrounds this year because that gives you time to do the work. Uh, that is one. Yes, I guess you could look at it that way. Um, sure. I mean, I, I don't want to say it's a good thing to have not to have the fairgrounds because the fairgrounds is so um, it's 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 a part of our community. But yes, we could definitely take advantage of it not opening. And, and hopefully we could get on that property soon and, and smoke test it. But yes, you, you're right, Judy, Judith. And that smoke testing so is, only, if, if is the currently designated for the, the Mesa Del Mar and Fairgrounds area and due for completion in 2021, or is there are there areas in the city that you're considering it, performing smoke tests? Well, this was the only, uh, when we had the recent um, rain events, um, 
we always look at our pumps um, and, and like I mentioned earlier, see how hard they're pumping. And Mendoza pump station was the only one that's <coughs> pumping harder than usual and than all the other rest. And so being at, at, being at close proximity to the fairgrounds, that was our first assumption. Okay, it must be from the fairgrounds. So we, we smoke test a, a portion of, of the tributary area, didn't see any illegal connections in the tributary area. So then we said, okay, then let's go look at the, let's go look at the fairgrounds. And that's when we found those, those five um, manhole covers. Um, and uh, we suspect other, there's other legal connections in, on that property. Thank you. I have a question. Yes. If they're not supposed to be connected to this water district, are there other water districts that they are connected to or sanitation districts? No, no, we're the only sanitation. Well, no, they're not, they're not illegally. I mean, there's Orange County Sanitation District in the community. Uh, we do not believe they're connected to them um, because they're, the, the closest truck line is on Geisler, uh, I believe. And so they're not nowhere near that. So, so no, they, they'll only be connected to us. All right. So the fair would have to be connected in through this. Yes, correct. Okay. That's correct. Okay, next slide, please. Lonnie. Scott, just to let you know, uh, we do have, I'm um, Dickie here from OCSD, we do have a trunk line uh, going down Fairway, uh, Fairview. You're right, they do. You do have one. That's right. That's right, you do. Fairview. Yep, you do. You do have one. But we'll double check that, but I don't believe they're, they're connecting it on, on any OCSD. I think it's all, we believe it's connected to our lines, but we'll double check. Okay. So the next, um, yes, is there a question? Okay, I will move on. So the next one is um, our strategy closed circuit television pipeline. So, so we do have a, a, a camera um, and if you haven't seen it, we're more than happy to, sh to demonstrate to you. Um, the camera goes into our, our pipes and it televises the condition of our pipes. And this is a great a tool when we see a pipe that is uh, that we believe is going to be fail, uh, what we call imminent failure, then we go in and rehabilitate or repair that immediately. So um, this is a, a, a good strategy and action plan to continually uh, evaluating our, our, our sewer system on their um, current condition, on its current condition. That way we can be proactive and repair any deficiencies that we find through the CCTV videoing. The, um, the incorporated CCTV program, Granite XP, I think that's just the software that we use or we're going to use, we would use for our um, uh, CCTV program. The next strategy is providing education and training of staff. I think this is um, um, pretty self-explanatory how important it is to, to educate and, and train your staff, especially in the wastewater profession. Uh, we want to make sure that they're up to speed on the latest technology, the latest, the latest methods uh, for uh, cleaning and maintaining sewer, sewer infrastructures. So they are constantly going to uh, uh, training all over California, uh, sometimes it's even out of the state. And it's also a good opportunity to network with other wastewater professionals to learn what they're doing in other, in other parts of the country. So we want to definitely continue uh, on their education and training. The, the next item is inventory equipment and replacement parts. And the, the action plan on this one is, is to develop a, a system where staff could, we, we, we would have barcodes on all our supplies and equipment and the staff, when they, when they need those supplies, they scan them, they use a scanner to scan it. And then our superintendent would, would track the inventory level. And when the inventory level gets to a certain point, you know, then you can order those supplies rather than, than be surprised when what happens because what we don't want is when when our employees go to the yard, they need a parts or supplies and all by oh it's not there. Uh, we don't have any more and we forgot to order them. Well, now that delays our maintenance and more and what happens if it's an emergency. Right. So this will ensure that we continually have our inventory stocked and supplied and ready to go when we need them. And this one and if we have a timeline because of the software that does that does have uh, uh, there's a cost to that. So our, our plan is to do that um, in the 21-22 fiscal year when we do our next budget cycle. I think so. Okay, any questions on that? All right, we'll move on to the next slide, please. 
So the next one, assess the capacity of the entire sewer system. Right. So this is uh, really our, our sewer master plan. And this, if you want to watch the video yesterday, well, Michael Brennan gave a presentation to the board. He, he describes the, the hydraulic study and, and the master plan identifies, you know, what's our current capacity and what is the capacity we need in the future uh, when we assume the development that's, that's coming, that, that's, gonna, that's, that's ahead. And so we want to make sure that we have enough capacity for any new development. And that's what um, the hydraulic study does. And this is very important to, to do that. Um, the next action plan is to create work orders that need to be completed on an annual basis for rainy seasons. Um, so this is, again, a, a method we use to prevent inflow into our system, as I mentioned earlier. One of the things we do is we, we plug and manhole, we plug and seal some of our manholes. So as you know, some of our manhole covers, they have they have like prick holes in them on them, like a three or four prick holes, right? So we plug them and, and prevent any water coming in. Now we don't want to plug and seal the entire system because a sewer system creates gases, right? And if you if you don't if you don't have any kind of ventilations in, in the sewer system, what's gonna happen? Then you have your manholes blowing up, exploding up, but we don't want that. But we know where, what streets in the city, we have maps from the city that tells us we know which streets flood uh, are prone for flooding. And those streets that we know they're prone for flooding, we make sure they're plugged and sealed. So do we have a next rain event, we don't have water coming into our system. It's very important. The, um, the next item is, is brand new. Um, we right now we contract with uh, um, Rob Hamer's Associates to um, provide contracting services. We have an employee in our organization that has been for the past year and a half um, going to school and um, being trained on on, on inspections. Um, so by June he'll have a certifications of uh, of being an inspector, and then he will go out and inspect our public works projects. And this is to uh, really have uh, better control of our inspections, better ownership, and also save a little bit of, uh, we believe we can save a little bit of money on doing this as well, keeping it in-house. So this is a brand new program that we're starting in July. So we're really looking forward to this. Any questions so far? Oh, this is LED, I, I do. So I'm sorry to back up one, the performing the hydraulic study, that is the master plan, and that's master different plan. than the management. Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah, it is. It's definitely different. the the okay. management The management plan, the the, the sewer system management plan, is is a plan that identifies basically our day to day operations. the The master plan is more like a future. It's more like what do, what do we need to do in the future? To make sure we have our the, the the sewer system in place to handle our any new development. Okay. Thank you. Just for clarifying. I appreciate yes. it. Thank you. Thank you. So next we have on here, any more questions. So the next one we have is um, uh, making our, our geographic information system or GIS data remotely accessible. And, and we do that now. Uh, we have um, all our, our, our field crews have tablets, wireless tablets, where they can access GIS maps. They can access um, our asset management system, videos, work orders, all out in the field. So it doesn't require them to come back to the yard to get paper, paper work orders or to review maps. Um, it's all in the, on, on, on the finger on the, on the fingertips. So it's 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 greatly improved our efficiency on, on, on maintaining our sewer system. So we'll continue doing that. The next the next um, strategy is um, uh, incentivize uh, resident property owners to maintain their private sewer laterals. So most of you may may aware or may not be aware um, private laterals. Your private lateral is the responsibility of you of the homeowner. So basically the pipe from your home to the street is the property owner's responsibility. Um, all the, the pipes in the streets is the district's responsibility. So what this program or what this strategy does is we want to encourage residents to be proactive in maintaining their laterals. And that's something majority of people don't do because you really just don't think about it, right? Because wastewater is an out of sight, out of mind type of, type of service. You don't think about maintaining your lateral like you maintain your car. But laterals do um, um, get old. They do they do crack and break, and they do be maintained. They might have heavy root infestations. So we have a program 
that allows um, uh, we we um, allow residents to CCTV their laterals at no cost. It's a rebate program, so we reimburse them on the CCTV program, and then once the video is done, they give that video to us. We review the video and we make recommendations for them, and we tell them here's what you think we we think you need to do for your laterals. And with that information, now the property owner can go get three bids, three competitive bids. Um, what we saw in the past is many um, plumbers were taking advantages of particularly senior citizens. They were telling them, hey, you know, you need to do this relining of your lateral and it's going to cost you $8,000. And here we have yeah. senior citizens that are on fixed incomes and they, and, and they come to us helpless and we can't do anything about it. This program helps protect the property owners because now we're going to give them suggestions. Um, and if you need a new clean out, we'll reimburse you up to $500 for that clean out as well. So um, this is a, um, a very good program. Um, if, if, you, if, if you want to participate, please um, submit an application. Um, uh, I think you can get that online. Or if you know someone about it, please please refer this program to, to um, our residents. It's a very, not many, not many communities have a program like this. We're very proud of this program. Steve, uh, Scott, this is Dickie Fernandez. Um, is, uh, in Costa Mesa, is the property owner responsible for the lateral up to the property line or up to the main line? Up to the main line. Okay. Yeah, good question. Up to the main line. So, yeah, so even if, if the pursuit allows in the sidewalk, you know, on the side, that's, the, that's the property owner's responsibility. Is there any uh, advertising for that type of incentive program? We, we do, um, yes, we, we put it in our newsletter um, that goes out quarterly. We have it on, uh, we, we or occasionally we'll blast it on social media. It's on our website. Um, we do have a, um, we recently just implemented a new contract with a, a, the, with a public relations firm that's gonna help us with our, um, our, community, our, our community outreach strategy. So this is one area we're hoping that our consultant can help us um, expand the net to, to expand the net to more to, to reach more people about this program. What about um, can the city help in any way with that, or is that something that's not possible? It, it, absolutely, they can. Uh, the next one will they? I guess that's more of the question. I mean, we ask them, and, and and a lot of times they help us. I mean, they'll they'll put it on their um, their their uh, Costa Mesa two minute. Um, they can put it on their website. Um, it, we can advertise. Uh, we have advertising programs on their on their um, recreation brochure that costs money, but we can do that. But yeah, no, uh, the city can definitely help us out on that, and we have asked them in the past. But good. Do we have any direct links with someone inside the city that we can? Yeah, I usually talk to um, Dane Dean Bora. That's who I go sure. to. Yeah, I know Dane. Yeah, so he's he's been he's pretty responsible, but uh, yeah, yeah, we, we we do use them as a resource. They're a good resource. Yeah. Okay, I might have yeah. some some um, some people on the inside who might be able to pull some strings. Awesome, that'd be uh, any help you can have. That'd be great. That'd be great. That you might yeah. explain about the liaison meeting too. That helps. Yes, uh, thank you, Secretary Schaefer. So we also have a liaison committee meeting with um, uh, that meets quarterly. Um, that's with. Um, uh, city officials, um, Mesa Water District, and school district officials. Uh, basically, both, all organizations, they have um, elected officials and senior staff members attending those meetings. And it's a good way to just share information and uh, make requests. Uh, it, it's, it's a very um, uh, useful uh, tool as well. We, we do that. It's very, it's very good. And that's open to the public, too. Anyone can attend those meetings. Okay, let me let me move on to um, preventing sanitary sewer flows. I think this was one of the um, suggestions made by the board at the last meeting, and this is obviously uh, a no-brainer. Yes, that's our strategy. Um, I guess we have to come to some action plan on this one, um, but um, um, that is our ultimate goal: is to have zero SSOs. That is what we strive to do every year. So far in um, in 2020, we've had one small SSO. Hopefully, that's knock on wood the only one we have this year. Um, but that is ultimately our goal is zero every year. Next slide, please. Okay, so we're done with sewers. If there's no more questions on sewers, we'll move on to solid waste. And our objective of the solid waste is to provide an efficient solid waste collection system to reduce waste and increase diversion while maintaining environmental integrity. So I post to the to the committee any. Any questions, uh, any 
comments, suggestions on our objective here? If none, it sounds like everyone likes this, so we'll, we'll move on. Scott, just a quick reminder, it is 720, in case you may wanna leave further, leave this for the next meeting, possibly. Uh, we'll just we'll just uh, move on to 7:30, and then we'll see how far we can get in the next nine minutes, and then we'll see what the committee wants to do. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So here's our strategies. Uh, so we these are the strategies that we came up with to achieve our objectives. And again, I'm not going to go down each item, but if there's something you have a question on, we're here. To, we're happy to ask. Or if there's something you think we're missing, uh, we'd definitely like to hear it. Uh, this is LED. I, I had a question. Yes. It, in recycling white goods like appliances is that when the large item pickup happens is that currently the case or do they just get tossed no that's that's a good point and we do we do mention that later in 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 the action plan yes so um large items um white goods uh, are um recycled and okay. so um uh yeah so we, so we want to um encourage uh residents if, if they have washer and dryers refrigerators to you know you could use the large item collections and and they'll be recycled. Okay, so that's currently the, the case. It's not that you're trying to make it so that they will be recycled. Right, it's currently the case. I just don't believe, um, I think, we, I don't believe we, we could do a better job letting the public know that those items are recycled. I don't okay. think a lot of the members of the public realize that we, we could cycle white goods. Yeah, I wasn't, actually, I wasn't aware of that myself. Mm -hmm. Thank you, that's great. Sure, sure. thank you. I, I have a question. Uh, I, maybe I can't read it because it's on my, my phone. It's such a small screen. I thought I saw it somewhere else about cardboard. Is there efforts to, I mean, with everybody getting Amazon boxes, uh, is there recycling of cardboard that's on here too? Yeah, we, we don't we don't explicitly say that um, in our strategy, but but recycling, yes, cardboard is part of our recyclables. Um, believe it or not, recycle uh, cardboard cardboard still has value, fortunately, unlike some um, other materials like plastic. And uh, I think uh, Chairman uh, Kerry can attest to that. Um, uh, but we do uh, encourage cardboard. Um, one thing we do suggest um, is to um, break, rip up your cardboard and put it in your carts. Um, uh, you know, I sometimes I see a lot of large, they put a lot of large boxes in their carts and it just fills it up uh, very quickly. Uh, but yes, we do collect cardboard and it's part of our recycling program. Great, thank you. Sure. Okay, Nalai, next slide, please. Okay. Okay, so the first right focus on generally less contaminated materials. So as you know, um, we have um, our mixed waste containers, which uh, collect trash and recyclables. They all put that in one cart. And then you have your organics cart, which is our food scraps and green waste. So sometimes we get people putting trash in the green waste or people are putting green waste in the trash. Um, sometimes even recyclables in the trash are, are, are contaminated. So this is a really important strategy and action plan is that if we can change people's behaviors and reduce the contamination level on our curbsides, then that means we'll have more recyclables that are clean and can be re, and can be diverted. Therefore, our diversion will increase, uh, will go, will, 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 will be higher. Um, this is this is gonna be a challenge because this is gonna change, trying to change people's behavior. And this is where our, our, our a PR firm is going to come in and try to help us with that. But this is a, a big action plan we're going to be focusing on um, this, this next five years is trying to reduce contamination. Any, any questions on that? The completion time noted is quarterly. Does that mean the quarterly check-ins? Yes, that means we're going to be, re we're going to be evaluating contamination every quarter and, and try to, to, to uh, measure the progress being made. Okay. Yes. So, uh, collecting sharps and pharmaceuticals. So um, this is really important because we don't want sharps like needles in our trash uh, because you know we can have people getting pricked. Uh, we don't want people flushing down the toilets either because because you know especially in Costa Mesa where those can end up is in our pumps. And so when our guys are pulling the pumps, they can get pricked. And so we don't want those in there. So for safety of 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 the public's health, we want to make sure they're they're safely collected. And we do have a drop off box at HQ. Uh, which we also give out free containers for people. Um, they can drop those off um, and that's uh, year round available. Um, we also have a pharmaceutical drop off program. Uh, again, we don't want um, uh, pharma um, uh, medicine um, uh, flushed out of toilets or, or 
illegally dispose of because again it can contaminate the environment so again we we have a separate drop off box at hq for residents to drop off their medicine and so we want to make sure um, those opportunities are available uh, the action plan is exploring other um, facilities to have those drop off boxes uh, like the sharps the pharmaceuticals i believe we can't i think there's a state law that we can only have those at at, at us um, government facilities uh, like the senior center um, um, or city hall um, but i can't um, uh, or maybe it's sharps i think this might be sharps program um, the sharps program can only be in certain state facilities but the pharmaceuticals ones we can probably expand it to other pharmacies which we're, we're going to explore here in the future scott have those uh, both of those programs been temporarily suspended um, in lieu of covid or at least collection at headquarters no, um, we'll we'll go ahead and um, we'll go ahead and allow people coming in and use it. So um, again, we always have someone at HQ. Um, uh, they just got you know tap on the on the door and we can let them in and and they can because um, uh, the boxes are right there in the front door. So we can let them in and they can they can use those those boxes if they need to. Thank you. So I'll do the last one here and then um, I'll, I'll give you some direction from the community on what you want to do in the future. But the not, last one here is, is to provide a convenient method for disposing HHW. So uh, I think it was last year or maybe a year, two years ago, we, we implemented door-to-door um, -door household hazard waste collections. So if you have any paint, uh, any um, pesticides, any kind of household chemicals, uh, you no longer have to drive that down to Huntington Beach to drop it off. And you know you're not you cannot uh, throw it away in the trash. So a convenient way is you call our hauler CRNR, and you let them know what you want to drop off or what you want them to pick up. You put it on their doorstep and they pick it up. It's a great convenient program. I wish we had that here in Orange. I got to drive my my materials all, all the way up to Anaheim to drop off my materials. Um, our goal here is to increase that by five percent. We're not seeing the particip partic participation level as much as we wanted to see. So. The goal action plan here is hopefully we can increase that 5% with the assistance of our PR firm. So that, that is our action plan on, on, on that. And with that, Chairman Kerry, um, we're just about 7.30 right now. And this is where we usually table our items. So I would like to, if it's okay with Chairman Kerry, maybe if you can put it, um, uh, ask your, your fellow community members if they want to continue the discussion at a future meeting here in the near future, and we can go through uh, the other elements as well. Well, uh, let's see, let's bring it up to the committee. Um, I, I know your goal and your intention is to get this before the board at their uh, meeting at the end of June. Our meeting, our next meeting isn't scheduled until July 8th. Um, does the committee at large feel a need to have a, another meeting next month, maybe um, June 10th. I don't know. Is that is that too late to provide feedback to you, Scott? No, I mean it, it's you know, we have some flexibility here, Chairman Kerry. I mean we can meet next week, two weeks, whichever you, you think is necessary. And and we would only have this item on the agenda, so we want other items so we can hopefully um, um, get through it um, with another meeting. Okay. What's the feeling of the rest of the committee? Well, before we uh, start speaking on that, what would be the latest time? Oh. What would be the latest time that we can meet so everyone can have a kind of like an understanding of the schedule? Um, what would, so what would be the latest time that we can meet that you'll be able to bring this to the board? Um, let's see. One second. So let's see. Our, our next or June meeting will be June 29th. Wait, one, two, three, four. The June 22nd. Um, I would need, to, we would need no later, no longer current or wrong. What, what do you think is June 11th is the latest? Would you say? Okay, great, great. Would you agree with that? No I, I would agree. June 11th would be the latest. Okay. Okay. So between May 13th, which is today and June 11th, it'll be a good time for us to schedule another meeting. If we like to go through this, yes. uh, um, to continue. Correct. Correct. Thank you. Thoughts from anybody and, else? And, and how far are we through this presentation? Are we halfway? Is this a good indicator that it would take one and a half hours in addition? Or do we understand how much longer it will take? I, I think, I, you know, if we have just this item on the agenda, um, it'll be close. To be honest with you, it'll be close. I, I, I can't guarantee it'll get through all in an hour and a half, but it, it'll be close. 
right, thank you. Bye. Do we have a recommendation for another meeting? To the committee at large? I recommend that we meet June 3rd. That will give them a full extra week to discuss before their deadline. Um, and that's on a Wednesday, which when which is when we usually meet, and uh, that gives us, you know, a, about three weeks or actually three weeks to kind of review any additional information. Um, if someone has another day, I'm completely open to that. That was an arbitrary date that I pulled out. Okay. Yeah, I apologize. It, June third is the only evening one that I can't do. That's our we're doing a virtual scholarship award ceremony that night. Any other Wednesday is fine with me. Uh, the June 10th. And we suggest May 27th. Uh, I'm okay with May 27th. I'm not. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I have another meeting. May 27th works for me. Uh, so we need another date then. Um, is there another date someone prefers? Uh, the other date on a Wednesday would be May 20th, which is the next week. So I guess the two options. Any objections? Be, yeah, I May 20th or June or June 10th. Um, that keeps us on on schedule. I don't know if June 10th is pushing it too much for. I would propose May 20th months. since the. You know, the material will still be fresh in our minds. Okay. Okay. May what? 20th. Next week, Wednesday? May. Yeah. Next Wednesday, week. May 20th, which is next week. And do you yeah. still want to keep it at six or do you want to move it at a different time? You know, it's up to you. We can do a different time as well. We're open to moving it earlier if it fits everybody else. Yeah, I can do earlier. What's your pleasure? 5.30. I can't do much earlier than 5.30 because I work nine to five. We can keep it at six if that's better. Any objections to May 20th, which is next week on Wednesday at six o'clock? I think that's yep. a winner. Yep, let's okay. do that. Unless there's any objections, let's go with May 20th. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. All right. And then uh, the, the last, uh, well, we're actually out of time, but um, the last item on the agenda is uh, committee member uh, comments or reports. Um, is there anybody that would like to speak up at this point? I, um, I just noticed um, on one of those slides that there was the um, flag um, I, I'm not sure what, how it was worded, but basically the flag retirement or the flag um, recycling. Yes. And I just, I, I sense that everybody likes, you know, to be a part of America and everyone enjoys their flags. And I, I just feel like there's a real opportunity there that we can get the community involved. I don't know what that opportunity is, but it's maybe something that people can think about for our next meeting. Yeah, I'll, I'll be more than happy to share about that program too. It's uh, it's funny it, that program actually was suggested by our former board member, um, 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 and, and he came up with this idea because he saw it in, in Newport Beach, and it's been very successful. We team up with the Boy Scouts, local Boy Scouts, and they collect the program. We did see, we did, we did see flags, believe it or not, ending up in the landfills. If you believe that, if you oh. believe that. Um, and so um, I was, yeah. This is very, very excited about this program. I'll be more than happy to share with you at, at next week. Though. It's, it's a great program. Thank you. Yeah. With 4th of July coming up, that might provide some sort of um, educational opportunity. That's a good point. Yeah, we could talk about that. Absolutely. Okay, great. Any other committee me member uh, comments? No. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Secretary. Director Schaefer, I just wanted to say I was very impressed with the committee. I think you did a great job tonight. And of course, my manager always does. And on top of that, I want to thank all of you for attending and being really involved in this. Great. Thank you, Secretary Schaefer. Thank you. 
Um, and I'd also like to thank uh, Secretary Schaefer and uh, Scott and staff for, for facilitating this meeting, um, unique circumstances and making it flow seamless. It was, it was perfect. Well, thank you, thank you. Any other comments before we adjourn? No? Hearing none, we'll adjourn this meeting at uh, is it 7.36. Um, and we'll meet again next week. All right. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next week. Thank, everybody. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Good night. Okay. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.